Hello, this is uh, Chris here, and I'm, I've got the uh, 3D Fused uh, mod kit for the X and Z axis for my uh, Ender 3 version 2, and I'm actually in progress of working on it, but I discovered a problem that whenever this moves really fast, uh, it's like a travel motion, it would stutter, it would go brrrr, and... Um, I looked into it, took a part and looked into it, and I noticed uh, the belt alignment, and I've already made a fix for it, which is already installed, but the belt alignment, you know, this is fine, it goes straight, you can see how it runs along the line of the linear rail. But over here, uh, this edge here was pushing the belt outwards this way, so it was being torqued. And so the belt then would travel you know, at an angle like this, and it had to make a bend, which was no good. So what I did is I took like an old credit card and made like a two millimeter or one and a half millimeter shim here to push this out a bit so that the belt can ride in the middle um, because this needed to uh, go out that way. See, on the Ender 3 V2, you can't move this. This is press fit on. So you can't adjust the in and out of the, uh, whatever you call this, the T20 G2 belt, whatever it is, gear. So, um, you know, among other things, right now I'm working on uh, changing out the nozzle and cleaning parts up and stuff like that. But yeah, um, so be wary of that. And whenever you add, say, about two millimeters worth of space here, I recommend uh, changing out the six millimeter to the eight millimeter long bolts because uh, with the extra two millimeters you won't get a good grip. Let's see. This is a uh, here. This is an M2. Oh, well, this is a sorry M3 by six. And then in this here, this is an M3 by eight. So you just need a couple extra millimeters. It doesn't go more than like three millimeters deep into the stepper anyway. But um, yeah, that's that's the story. This is one giant mess. I'm also replacing the Bowden tubes while I'm at it. And just a good little tear down here. Another thing with the Ender 3 V2 kit is uh, if you have a dual Z axis mod where you've got a second screw, it likely came with a back plane that was meant to be used in conjunction with um, the Delrin wheels. But if you'll notice here, when they give you the 3D fused kit, they add this extra, they give you this replacement spacer and longer, uh, what was these M4 or M5 bolts here to use. And the this works great over here on a single Z mod. But on a dual Z mod, what I found is that there's not enough space here. So if you're wise, you'll measure the length of these spacers and print your own to uh, put over here. Because And you're going to need uh, 50 millimeter long bolts. I believe these are um, M5s. But yeah, M5 by 50. Otherwise, it probably won't reach all the way across. I use the Delrin spacers plus some flat washers, like four of these Delrin wheel spacers plus three flat washers, which are about a millimeter each, to make up the difference so that I could get this back plate on and be able to run the second screw. Um, yeah, uh, other notes on mods unrelated to the 3D fused kit. Uh, I 3D printed the uh, Ender 3 V2 horizontal rail mod. Now the V1 and the Pro models have a, uh, this is a 2x, oops, oh, there we go. This is a 2x2 two two block here, if you can see, but in the older models, this, this is a 1 wide by 2 tile, so they tend to put just a single rail on top. I don't like that. I don't like putting a lot of torque like that. I like having this supported so that Whenever I press like this, I don't feel like I'm going to harm the uh, uh, the, car the carriage, the carriage block. So, 
Um, yeah, if you look under here, uh, I had a lot of trouble with the 3D printed um, brackets they suggested on Thingiverse. Uh, the main issue being um, tolerances. So what I wound up doing is on one side, you could see I used their printed, uh, their printed adapters for like M5 to M3 here. But on the other side, I use a stack of washers over there to um, bolt them down. And so here's one support block. Now this plate here sits directly on the carriage block, but this bracket is to bolt this to this. I had to cut some relief in it. And if you'll see, on both sides, I only screwed in the top two screws because if I screwed in the bottom screws, it would actually squeeze and apply a torque here, which is probably indicative of needing more, better tolerances, but hey, it's 3D printed. So, um, not wanting to print more, I just uh, shaved things down and cleaned it up and then decided to do one. And, you know, smooth as butter after you get it settled. So you put in two screws here and here, you tighten these ones on the fixed washers down, and then you uh, tighten down the ones with the washers. I have like a, an M5, an M4, and then an M3 washers stacked up. And I tighten these down so that uh, they account for the offset of these to, to make up for the slop, basically. But man, dual, dual linear rails, these are the uh, Ivern Tech ones, not the high win. If you just soap them up in a bath of water, then so uh, then rinse them in clean water. You know, so soap, you know, like Dawn, then clean water, and then uh, you know, once they're rinsed out, pour some denatured alcohol in a tub and run them through there, and then let it dry out, and then uh, pour oil in. And when it, whenever it comes to these linear rails, these little holes here um, are actually oiling ports. So you just inject your oil there. In this case, I have some, I don't know, nano oil. It is actually made by some, uh, some guy who has gun maintenance equipment. Not that I have any guns, but um, yeah, you just put it in there if you can. Or just oil in these tracks along here because they sit on the V's. Anyway, um, no, that's that's all my notes. Um, let me know if you have any other feedback. But I hope this helps you.